great qualities to look for in a relationship when you're dating someone. You know, while you're hanging out with someone or going out on multiple dates, etc. I'd look for these special qualities in the one you hope to find for you. These can apply to you and the one you're hanging out with and considering for a relationship. Check this out. Here's what to look for. Great qualities to look for in a relationship when you're dating someone or about to enter into a dating relationship. While you're excited to go on that first date or your second or your third or fourth, take things slowly. You're in no rush to reach any particular finish line, if you know what I mean. That comes later, if you know what I mean. Be patient through and through to see how things develop. We're watching and looking for mistakes, trip-ups, pitfalls, failures. You don't push too fast for anything where it concerns satisfying any unsatisfied wants or needs that you might have from being single or from past relationships. In the beginning is not the time for that. You're also easygoing and you don't get uptight if things don't go your way. You know all things will eventually come to you if you're patient. Sure, you can chase after your date. That's fun. Just don't lose your cool if he or she doesn't call you right back or text you within five minutes of your texting them. <laughs> Relax. Always. You speak in kind and supportive tones and you use words that empower and inspire and motivate the other person. You're open to things going further in the relationship if you want. And you're not upset if they don't happen the way you'd like. Remember, if it's meant to be or go a certain distance, then it will. So relax. See what happens. Every interaction with a human being, especially in the dating world, is an opportunity to learn something about yourself and the other person. This whole beginning phase is about learning, not so much quick satisfaction and, you know, got to get my urges satisfied. Halt right there. Stop. You make regular efforts to hang out with this person so you can get to know him or her better. This includes about eh, one to three dates a week, which might include having a few meals together, enjoying activities together, and talking on the phone or in person or over Zoom for hours on end because you want to know more about this person, so you're willing to make the investment of time with them. You're also more interested in verbal communications than physical because you want to find out if this person really is the one for you. Sure, it's great to hug and hold and kiss, but remember, you have to be your own private investigator as well in order to find out if this person is someone worth going the distance with. Remember, there are a lot of <laughs> whacked out people in this world. Talk first. Learn second. Act third. It's not the other way around. Trust me, this is for your benefit and theirs, but mostly yours. You know, talk first. Learn second. Act, do, you know, pounce, jump, grope. <laughs> I'm kidding. Third. Actually, some of those are fourth and fifth, but uh, you get the idea. <sighs> You're not controlling in any sense, and neither are they, and you won't let them be controlling. Over time, this negative trait will eventually come out as people get comfortable with you and let their shield down, you know, hiding their BS. Then the not-so-nice tendencies and behaviors, they start to show their ugly head. When you see those signs appear, you know what to do, right? You know, uh, <laughs> exit stage left. <laughs> uh, let's see, what rhymes with... Buh. Well, let's see. Buh bye uh, That'll work. You respect the other person and never put them down for something that they might say or do. Mm. Yet, you take note in case the things they say or do aren't something you'd like to hear or be around when they happen. For example, a woman was dating a man who witnessed him snap at someone harshly and in front of his friends and family. His voice was extraordinarily demeaning and humiliating to the one on the receiving end. Well, 
you can imagine. If you had witnessed that type of behavior, you might secretly say to yourself, wow, if I see that happen again, I'm going to bring it up. If I see it happen a third time, I'm leaving. They obviously have some anger issues, and I'm not paid to be their therapist. So what was that again? Buh, 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 bye. Communication is clear, clean, and supportive to everyone you come in contact with. You speak in fun and loving and supportive ways that make you both feel warm and happy and inviting and welcomed. And it stays that way or else. You look for and try to find a common purpose and are committed to each other's growth. You make an effort to bring everything you can into the relationship. You also appreciate and recognize each other's contributions and bring attention to the great ones. Oh, I love this about you. I also love that about you. Oh, these two or three things, they just, they're the best and the mostest and the greatest and the bestest. Oh, I love that about you. You both seek to build trust between the two of you and never do anything to break that growing bond. You are each other's confidants now. You confide in each other. You don't tell the world your dirty laundry. <laughs> no, you take that laundry to the laundry room and you just talk to your special little new significant other. You keep that stuff private. You look for ways to be thankful and say so openly to the other person. So they're inspired to do it for you and make you feel awesome as well. Oh, thank you. Oh, so sweet of you to do that. Disagreements, conflicts, and arguments are not an opportunity to get the upper hand or prove who's right or wrong. They're opportunities to ask questions so you can both draw the conclusion that you are in agreement on what's good for your mutual benefit. I'm going to repeat that. That's actually... Hmm. Disagreements, conflicts, and arguments are not an opportunity to get the upper hand or prove who's right or wrong. They are opportunities to ask questions so you can both draw the conclusion that you are in agreement on what's good for the mutual benefit of each other. Hey, whoa, 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 let's slow down here. I don't want to argue. No, no, no. What seems to be the problem? First question. What's your viewpoint? What's your perspective on this? What are your thoughts? Questions. Okay, well, what if we did this in this way? Would you be happy? And Because I'd be happy. Question. So see how questions are calming the situation down? Just ask questions. You support each other's dreams and hopes and fantasies and desires. Can you get behind what it is that he or she wants just so you are mutually open to getting behind what the other person wants? <laughs> you know, find out what their hopes and dreams are. How can we fund them? Do they need time, space? Do they need tools? You know, what do they need? Let's get them those things so we can then get behind them and support them and make them happy. And, oh, look what I did. I painted this ocean and I put it up on the wall. It looks like we now have an ocean view. Isn't that great? Oh, I love it. It's great. <laughs> Your personal skills, talents, likes, and abilities work in concert with the one you're with while your differences give room for growth beyond yourself as you become one with this person. You know, it's very interesting. We all want to be in a relationship. We want to date. We don't want to be lonely. We want those things. But really, what is it that we become? Are we asking for what it is that we want to be in? Or are we asking for what we want to become? So for example, you're on a date and one or someone's pushing the envelope a little too fast, a little too far to please their desires. And you know what I'm talking about. But your take is, look, I want those things too. But I'm looking for someone who wants to become one with me. I want a team player. I want someone who will join my team as I join their team. And we become one team for a long time. I'm looking for someone who has longevity who can be that one. I don't want a fling. I don't want temporary satisfaction on the weekends because I got, you know, a mate, a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. No, I'm looking for the one. 
I want the whole package. I want the fairy tale. I want the fantasy. I want to be part of that one unit. And if you're not it, if you don't have those qualities, please step aside. You're wasting my time. But thank you. It's great meeting you. Good luck. Lastly, you express words and actions of love often. Don't let too much time pass between phone calls and checking in with that special someone so you know what's going on or if there's anything you can do for them. And they're going to do that for you. These are just some of the qualities to look for in a relationship when you're out there looking to find someone to date. Hey, I hope they've helped. There's so much more to come in this book. I call this book, Find the One for Me, the Bible of Relationships. It covers you from age 18 to 88. It's an amazing volume of knowledge. I love it. I don't know any book that can compete with this book. There's so much great knowledge to come. Let's get into it right now. Upcoming, the next audio in this part, number four, hanging out with the one for you. Come on, let's check it out.